Integrating Google Sheets with Zapier will unlock a whole new world of automation capabilities for you. In this video, I'm going to go through the three options for importing rows from Google Sheets into Zapier. We have the lookup spreadsheet rows action. We've got the lookup spreadsheet row, and then we've got the get many spreadsheet rows action. And I'll be going through all three of these in this video. I recommend taking a look at the Zapier Google Sheets Quick Start Guide because this will be the best guide for you based on the number of rows you want to import and the amount of data you want to import to tell you which is the best way to bring that data into Google Sheets because as you can see here, the lookup spreadsheet rows action and the get many spreadsheet rows action are limited to 500 rows maximum. So if you want to import more than 500 rows or more than 10 megabytes, then take a look at this Zapier Google Sheets Quick Start Guide because it'll show you the best ways to do that. So without further ado, let's dive into the first of our actions here, the lookup spreadsheet row action. Let's jump into Zapier to take a look at how we set up this lookup spreadsheet row action. So we select it from the event dropdown. Then we go to the account. We specify the spreadsheet we're interested in. We specify the worksheet. And then we specify the lookup column. And then the lookup value here, we can insert a dynamic value that can change based on actions further up the zap. So in this case, we get a timestamp value from this catch hook action. And then we look up this timestamp value that we get from step one in the concatenated column sheet in the lookup column. So we take that timestamp value that we got from step one, we look it up in this timestamp column here, and then that will bring in all the information from this row. So then if we go to the output here, we can see we get all of the different column values when we find the row in Zapier. Some other things that we can configure in this action are to include a supporting lookup column and a supporting lookup value. What these do is they allow you to be extra detailed when you're doing your search. So for example here, we could include an extra lookup column here. And in this case, I selected the names column and then you can put in an extra lookup value so you can again select a variable from one of the earlier steps in the zap or you can just type something in like tyron123 so now this zap will only return information if the timestamp matches this value and the value in the names column matches tyron123 so that's how you can use the supporting lookup column here. Both of these searches must be true in order for this action to return any information. Then the final part of this is whether to search from the bottom up. If you select true, then Zapier will start searching from the bottom of the sheet and then going up. The default is false, which means it starts searching from the top of the sheet and goes down. So it depends on your use case. In this case, we can see that new values keep getting added to the bottom of this sheet. So it would make sense for us here, since we're searching for the timestamp in this column, to search from the bottom up because the newest timestamps will be at the very bottom of the sheet. So we could select true here for this. And then should this step be considered a success when nothing is found? And this is up to you. Uh, if you want the rest of the zap to continue, and no other steps in the zap depend on this search, then you can say yes. However, if there are steps in the remainder of this zap that do require information from this step, then it's best to set this equal to no, because if nothing is found here, then the zap terminates. And that's a good thing because if it didn't terminate, all the rest of the steps would fail because they depended on information from this step completing successfully. We also have the option to create a new spreadsheet row if nothing is found 
for our search up here. And then we can specify what values should go into all these different fields. And again, we can use variable, we can use variable values from steps that come earlier on in the Zap to populate all of these fields. Okay, so now let's take a look at the lookup spreadsheet rows action. So we select the lookup spreadsheet rows action from the event dropdown. Then in the action section here, the setup is very similar to the lookup spreadsheet row action that we already went through. So we select the sheet, we select the worksheet. The lookup column today that I'm using is the, to, is the delivery today column. So in this case, I'm pulling in the customer database worksheet. So that's this worksheet here. And the lookup column I'm using is the delivery today column. And here, if the person's order will be delivered today, the checkbox will be checked. So I'm using the delivery today lookup column. The lookup value is true because I only want to pull in the people whose order will be delivered today. I'm not specifying any supporting lookup columns or values here. I'm not choosing from the bottom up because I want my sheet to search from the top down. And then here I can specify the maximum number of rows I want Zapier to bring in. It's currently set to 10. And then again, I can set whether I want this step to be considered a success when nothing else is found. So let's go continue here. And we can see that three rows have been returned. Row two, four, and seven. So we can see that rows two, four, and seven have been returned. And you can see that rows 13, 20, and 29 have not been returned. And the reason for this is because, as I showed earlier on in the action here, it's only searching the first 10 rows of the Google Sheet. If we want to bring in rows 13, 20, and 29, then we will have to search the first 30 rows of the sheet. So let's do that. Go we'll continue. And then let's retest the action. And then if we scroll through here, we can see we get row 13, row 20, and row 29. We can then take all the rows that have been returned and use them in a subsequent loop through line items action. And you can see we pull in all the rows that we got from step number two here so that we can iterate through them. If you've never used the create loop from line items action before, then I recommend taking a look at the Zapier loop through line items example post because I've got another walkthrough video here which shows you how to set up the create loop from line items here in Zapier. Okay, now let's take a look at the get many spreadsheet rows action. So contrary to the two lookup spreadsheet rows action we've looked at earlier in this video, the get many spreadsheets rows action does not look does not use a lookup value. It's actually very simple. You just specify what columns you want to pull in. So in this case, for the customer database sheet, I just want to pull in columns A to D. So I just put in A to D here. And then I specify the number of rows I want to pull in with the maximum being 500. And then I specify the first row that I want to pull in. And then I hit continue hit test action. And then we can see all the rows that are returned. And once again, we can use this information to do something useful, like loop through all of the rows returned and send each person an email and an SMS. So let's take a look at how that is configured. Again, it's using the create loop from line items action. So you can take a look at this blog post here, if you wanna see how this action works. And then here we're pulling in the formatted rows that we get 
from step number two here. And we pull in all the names, order numbers, emails, and phone numbers that we want to iterate through. And if we hit test on the action, we can see what each iteration of the for loop will iterate through. So the first time it goes through, these are all the values it will access. The third time it goes through, these are all the values it will access. The fifth time it goes through, it'll send the text to this number and it'll send the email to this email using steps four and five here. So it's worth noting, and I mentioned this at the very start of the blog post, that both the get many spreadsheets rows action and the lookup spreadsheet rows action are limited to bringing in 500 rows at once. So if you want to bring in more than 500 rows or import more than 10 megabytes into Google, if you want to import more than 500 rows or more than 10 megabytes into Zapier, then take a look at this quick start guide to find out the best way to do that. And then if you're interested in looping through all these values that you get, then I recommend taking a look at the Zapier for each loop quick start guide to show you how you can use the different looping actions within Zapier. There are three of them. We've got create loop from line items, create loop from numbers and create loop from text. I go through all three of those in this Zapier for each loop quick start guide. And I also go through how you can overcome the 500 row iteration limit in these actions. So you'll notice here, it says that the maximum number of iterations is 500. But in this blog post, I show you how you can overcome that 500 iteration limit using nested loops in Zapier. So check this out if you need to iterate more than 500 times. I hope this video was useful for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.